You're watching Medical News Network, your trusted source for the latest in medical news and information. I'm Mike Wigenstein, and thanks for joining us. We're very pleased to have in studio an internationally recognized lecturer, author, and educator in the treatment and cure of sleep apnea and TMJ. So if you snore, toss and turn at night, are always fatigued or tired, have chronic neck or shoulder pain, have a child who's undersized, still wets the bed, has difficulty focusing, or has even been diagnosed with ADD, then you don't want to miss what our guest has to say. So stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome to an educational and comprehensive discussion with today's top medical experts. Your trusted source for the latest in medical news and information. You're watching Medical News Network. Welcome back. Our guest today is Dr. Brock Rondeau. Dr. Rondeau is a member of the American Academy of Dental Sleep Medicine, a diplomat of the International Board of Orthodontics, and a diplomat of the American Academy of Craniofacial Pain, a small and select group of dental professionals specializing in the treatment and cure of sleep apnea and TMJ. Dr. Rondeau's practice in London, Ontario is recognized by patients and peers alike as a cutting-edge facility in the care and cure of these disorders. Dr. Rondeau, welcome to the show. Thanks, Mike. It's nice to be here. Thanks for inviting me. All right, I brought you on today to talk <coughs> about sleep apnea and TMJ. But before we get into that, give me a little bit about your background, your history. Now, you teach all over the world dental professionals how to care for these disorders. Tell me how you got into that. Well, it was, I guess I'm, I'm a general dentist, first of all. I've been a general dentist for a long time. You can tell that from the gray hair. And basically, I, I started wanting to help children uh, that I saw that had malocclusions. That, now, means, that means bad bites. Okay. Children with o bad bites. Overbites, underbites? Overbites, underbites, receded jaws, whatever. And so I started treating these kids and getting very fulfilled because I would significantly improve the profiles. And later on in the program, I'll show you some before and afters that I've done. Uh, really, okay. really impressive, I think, which how you can change the facial profiles of these young kids. Are they, is it easier to treat at an early age? I mean, can you catch it early? Oh, much easier. All right. So you, you started to help the, the children. And, and what happened from there? Well, 90% of the children's face is developed by age 12. So if you want to guide the growth of your younger patients, you have to go in early. Now, do you I think, just to, I don't mean to interrupt you, but do you think most parents realize that if they get involved, if they catch this at an early age, they can have such a tremendous out, uh, effect on their child's life as an adult? No, I think the dental profession hasn't done a very good job of letting patients know that. And uh, there's been no TV programs, there's been no radio programs on this, and really, that's one of the reasons I was glad you br brought me on today to, to try and enlighten parents as to what kind of treatment they could get for their kids so they could prevent problems later on. Okay, so you started by treating the kids, and we're going to yeah. get into that a little bit. And then how did you transition over into helping the adults? Well, I started using functional appliances on these children, and these little functional appliances would move the jaw forward. Okay. And make their profiles look better. And I would also open up their airway when I brought their jaw forward. And mean, so the kids, would, the kids yeah. would breathe better and they would do better in school and everything else. But, and then what happened, I had a number of parents say to me, I have headaches and you got rid of my little girl's headaches. Could you do the same for me? And the, the number one cause, the number one symptom of TMD is headaches. Okay. Sleep apnea, the same thing. I mean, to what, basically, what is sleep apnea? Let's just start with that right now. Okay. What is sleep apnea? Sleep apnea is when a patient stops breathing for 10 seconds or more. Now, what happens is they, drew, they stop breathing for 10 seconds or more, maybe several hundred times a night. And that blocks the airway, and that reduces the amount of oxygen the patient gets. And then they have an arousal, and they wake up. And they wake up several times a night, and that really makes them very fatigued the next day. When you wake up all night long, you're not getting a very good sleep. So you, you, you're tired, you're listless, but you said in children, you notice the exact opposite. That's right. What's really funny is that, is that what's really interesting is that, is that the children get, they don't get fatigued, they get hyper. And they get a condition called attention deficit disorder, which right. is ADD. And, and then they, they're hard to handle because they're aggressive and they're, and they're excitable and they're hard to handle in school. So they, they tell the teachers, the teachers tell the parents, what are we going to do with these children? I can't control them. So they, the medical doctors then put them on medication 
Ritalin, which is mm. a stimulant. You right. wouldn't think a stimulant would calm people down, but it calms the children down. Because it's doing the exact opposite of what not having the oxygen is really doing. But now, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I've had some discussions with you, and you, you, I know that you have taken children that have ADD, that are on Ritalin, that you've put in the appliance, that you've worked with them, and you've actually, they most times are, are able to come off the medicine. Absolutely. I mean, you can give them a new drug, it's called oxygen. Now, tell me about that, because <laughs> I'm gonna, we're going to show a video clip you brought <coughs> of what, actually what sleep apnea is. And I talk to you about every now and then, my kids tend to breathe heavy, you know, my kids are good size, but they tend to breathe heavy, and every now and then they snore. And you said that that's not something. No, snoring is bad. Snoring, it means there's an obstruction in the airway. If you have an obstruction in the airway, then you're getting less oxygen than you're supposed to get, and you get all kinds of other symptoms. So the main problem of, of children that snore, they have large adenoids and tonsils. So they need to go to a, a dentist that, that has a, a, a potential to take an x-ray, a uh, cephalometric film of the side of the head, and check to see whether or not their tonsils and adenoids are enlarged. If they when, are enlarged... When I was a child, almost everybody got their tonsils out. If you got the flu, your tonsils swole up, <coughs> they chopped them out. Today, it doesn't seem like anybody wants to take them out. So they, they sit in the back of the throat, and you're saying that they, they swell up, and then the kids can't breathe. That's right. And then the adenoids, you can't really see. That's right. They're up behind, but they swell up. Okay. <coughs> so opening up the airway allows the oxygen to get in. Right. And then not having that oxygen in a child causes them to become hyperactive, you said? Hyperactive. Not be able to focus? Not be able to focus Now, you said still wet the bed. Yeah, they still wet the bed. Why, why would not breathing cause them to do that? The lack of oxygen causes that problem. All right. Well, let's take a quick look at the video clip so everybody can understand really what sleep apnea is. Okay. So let's roll the clip. Tell me what's going on here. So here's a lady that's just sleeping. Snoring? Snoring, yeah, yeah. All right. No big deal. Everybody you know, snores a little bit. But then she seems to <coughs> stop and, and lock up. So what happens in the throat? What happens is they, when they lie on their back, particularly their tongue falls back. And you see there, there's a, the tongue fell back, but there's a little space, so it's snoring. And when the tongue completely blocks the airway, it's, it's apnea. Okay. Now, when you have apnea, when the tongue completely blocks the airway, you say they wake up, but they don't remember it. That's right. Anytime your oxygen level goes down below 90%, then you have a problem. Because then the body says, we're not getting enough oxygen. And so the brain gives a message to the lungs to start breathing again. And that wakes the patient up. Because otherwise they'd arousal. suffocate. It's called an arousal. Okay, how does that, the, the, I mean, they still sleep all night. I mean, they're in bed eight hours or mm -hmm. ten hours. How does that translate into them feeling tired or fatigued the next morning? I mean, they still were in bed for eight hours sleeping, right? They have the partial wake-ups called okay. arousals maybe 50 times an hour. And then they're, they're exhausted when they wake up. I always ask my patients, do you feel refreshed when you wake up? Are you tired during the day? That's the number one symptom of sleep apnea. Fall asleep at, at the movies or at the stoplight in the car? Right. Or That's warm, a severe case. Fall asleep in front of the TV? Yes. Just tired, listless? Yeah. Now, you told me that because of the apneic events, they don't ever get into what is we've heard called REM sleep. That's correct. And what, is, what happens in your body during REM sleep that's so important? You dream and you get, and your body totally relaxes. So the patient's not dreaming. That's a very good sign that they may have sleep apnea. But also your spouse is the one that's really got to tell you if you have it. Because your nah. spouse will be upset because you stopped breathing. Right. And they're concerned that you've stopped breathing. They think you're going to die. And you will die unless the brain wakes you up and you have this arousal and start breathing again. Okay. I want to know, we're going to get into why you think people don't pursue treatment more. I know why I think. We have to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about CPAP. We're going to talk a little bit more about oral appliances that can cure this. And, and a little bit more about what people really need to know to understand how big a problem this is. How many people did you tell me TMJ and sleep apnea in, in North America? Well, in North America, 90 million people suffer from insomnia.